and greetings. So glad you're here for another installment of our word for 2023. We have broken this down into little pieces because God has said so much and is showing us so much about what he's doing and what he's going to be bringing into the earth. And, and the last installment I'm really excited about has to do with Jubilee, but we're not there yet. But please make sure you hear or watch the word about Jubilee. Glory to God that 2023 is a Shemitah year and that uh, the year 5783 is a Jubilee year on the Hebrew calendar. And we're getting them both in the same time frame. And it's going to be an outbreak in, of glorious manifestations of God's love in his people because of the time that we're living in. Such a very unique time. Today, we're going to talk about famine again. And this has to do with the famine that's not being brought into manifestation through economic means, which is going to happen. But this is the weather, the drought that just continues to grow worse and worse in the earth. And we know when famine is prophesied and spoken of in scripture, it often talks about drought and then the economic uh, stuff was related to their agrarian society. So it's still biblically sound to prophesy about famine in the earth that has to do with drought as well as the global economy where a lot of people think about stocks and bonds, but it's far more uh, uh, involved in that. So we're talking about today the parched earth, the drought, the, the second sign of famine. And we're going to pray and then get into the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you. God, prepare us. Prepare our hearts. You said, be of good cheer. You've overcome the world. You said, I have all authority of heaven and earth. God, you don't want us to be afraid. You want us to be close. Draw us close even right now as we listen to your word, as we listen to the way you're strengthening us, God, establishing us settling us. Glory to God. I speak 1 Peter 5 and 10 over all of us, God, that you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle us in this time. Glory. That's what you're doing. Glorify your name again and again in our lives, God. Take my mouth, take my mind, take my heart. Usher me into your presence as I preach, teach, proclaim, and prophesy your word. Help your people to receive it, understand it, and make it useful for them. God, that they might be directed into your heart, the depths of your love and your goodness, the, the awareness and the illustration of your holiness and your beauty, your majesty. May it be revealed in us, God. May your glory expand in the earth like the water covers the sea and do so even now through this ministry of faith fire in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So we've talked about famine uh, a couple of times. We talked about Goshen last time how it's the Lord's desire for us to be near him. Goshen means drawing near. It's a place where in the midst of Egypt, the people of God were still being protected. They were still being blessed. The Bible says they were growing and they were uh, being exceedingly fruitful. Glory to God. Even in the midst of the judgment that Egypt around them was, was incurring. And that's the same thing God has for us. And so it's the same desire for him as we talk about drought. He doesn't want you to experience the drought as the world does, he wants the world to bow and to be humble and be open to him. He wants us to grow deeper into him and to be firmly grounded in the word and to be firmly grounded in the spirit. And so the Lord spoke to me about parched earth. So I don't know if you've been paying attention to the signs. So we've seen the Mississippi River at historically low levels. We're seeing the uh, Euphrates River drying up. Lake Mead, where we know the Hoover Dam was created to create Lake Mead as a water drinking source out on the west coast of America. That has been drying up for months and months. What is the Lord saying? And it's not like we're not seeing any rain, but God is drying things up. It is an outbreak of the heart of God exposing the soul condition of the people. Glory to the Lord. And so we could talk about how when, when famine was proclaimed by the prophet Elijah in the book of 1 Kings, and he, he's prophesying this drought and we'll just have to go to Leviticus 26. I'll just talk about Elijah. We'll go to Leviticus 26. Elijah knew that God had told the people, if you're not going to walk with me, I'm going to shut up heaven and I won't rain. I won't allow rain to fall. I, I created the earth and I rule and rain and I will cause the water to not fall and dry things up. Why? Because he wants his people to turn. And so he wants us to turn to him. He wants us to cry out for him. He wants us to ask him good questions. God, what do you want us to change? And it begins at the house of God. Judgment begins at the house of God. We learn that, I believe, in the book of uh, 1 Peter. If it begins at the house of God, we, the body, need to be asking God, what are you saying to us as you're drying things up? What are you saying to us as we see 
uh, economic upheaval and change and shifts and instability. Yes, we should be in Goshen, but God, you're causing us to repent. You're calling, calling us to repent for the sins of our fathers and forefathers. There are some things God is saying, as my people which are called by my name, humble themselves and pray and seek my face. May they turn from their evil ways, right? And then I will hear from heaven. I will heal their land. That's what he wants to do. He wants the people of God to be the salt and the light, turning and repenting on behalf of everyone else. But he does it by creating a parched earth, a parched earth, a parched earth. So I want to just put this into your heart. Psalm 143 verse 6 talks about the soul condition that is parched. So what God is expressing in the natural with a drought is him showing us our heart condition. I'm going to say this again. He's showing us our heart condition by having the manifestation of drought. Our hearts have been hardened. And we're talking about the corporate Christ. We're talking about the corporate church. You might not be experiencing that in your church family, but you don't represent every single person in the body. God is seeing the whole body and he sees hardened hearts. He sees people that are devoid of his spirit, which is represented often in the scriptures by water. He's seeing people that are walking according to the ways and the whims of this world. And he's calling them out of that and into closer relationship with him. And so he's exposing our issue just like he exposed to Ahab when the prophet came and declared a drought. Ahab was walking in the ways of his forefathers, his wicked forefathers, and he had turned to idols. He had brought in Jezebel, married her, basically being in covenant with wickedness, perversion and iniquity. He was in covenant with false prophecy. He was in covenant with Baal. He was in covenant with the spirits that take children, that take unborn children or, or new children. He was in covenant with those who worshiped with uh, temple prostitutes, sexual immorality. I released a word about the, the, uh, the amount of corruption that the spirit, uh, the demonic spirits are building in our places of government and how there are three main spirits that the enemy is trying to set up and galvanize as principalities. The principalities are already there. He's galvanizing them. How? By getting more and more people to agree with the spirit of error that draws them into this deception and feeds these demonic spirits that inhabit and influence the entire land. They are abortion, sexual immorality. Those are two big ones. Abortion, sexual immorality are two big ones. And so the Lord has been speaking to me about this. And so the drought represents the soul condition of the body of Christ and the world. We need the spirit. We have hard hearts. We've not been seeking him. So he shut up heaven. Listen to Psalm 143, verse six. And this is an NIV. It says, I spread out my hands to you. I thirst for you like a parched land. He's talking about his soul. My thirst for you like a parched land. So our souls are thirsting, but not all of us are drinking. So we become parched. The Lord wants to send rain, but he can't. Why? Let's go to Leviticus 26. This is where the spirit of the Lord needs to minister to us. The other demonic principality is the spirit of violence and murder. The spirit of violence and murder that has set, up, set itself up over the land. So we have the spirit of abortion, principality of abortion, principality of violence, and principality of sexual immorality. And this is the amount of corruption that has been set up and the enemy wants to galvanize it and make it even more firmly seated in the earth. And the Lord has seen so many people in the body of Christ begin to agree with this. Look at the polls. You got believers that don't even have a biblical worldview. We've, we have believers that still agree with abortion. We have believers who are basically partnering with violence. We have believers who are partnering with such sexual immorality and saying you can be transgender and have whatever you, you want in terms of sexual identity and still be Christian. And these are the things the Lord is judging. He's showing us our destitution. He's showing us our dry heart, our hard heart. And he wants to plow, but he can't yet. He can't get the seed in yet because we're not letting the spirit, the dew of Hermon, we're not letting the gentleness of the Holy Spirit to open our hearts and eyes to the truth. But he's going to do it. He's going to do it the way he said he would. And I'm going to ask you to please be patient with me as I read Leviticus 26. This is critical for your study. This is critical for your understanding of the heart of God. And I'm going to try to get us out of here in 15 minutes. But I need to read this entire chapter so you hear the heart of God and how God uses famine. He uses drought 
to expose the hearts of his people and to get us to turn. And we need to pray into this. Those of us who are awake and watching, pray into this drought that it gets every single thing God wants accomplished in the name of Jesus. He says in Leviticus 26, you shall not make idols for yourselves. Neither a carved image nor a sacred pillar shall you rear up for yourselves, nor shall you set up an engraved stone in your land, in your land to bow down to it. For I am the Lord, your God. All of this is for us to know him as the Lord. I'm reading the New King James verse two. You shall keep my Sabbaths and reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord. If you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and perform them, then I will give you rain in its season. The land shall yield its produce and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. We're going to see this not happening. Your threshing shall last till the time of vintage and the vintage shall last till the time of sowing. You shall eat your bread to the full and dwell in your land safely. There will be shortages. Glory to God. I will give peace in the land and you shall lie down and none will make you afraid. I will rid the land of evil beasts and the sword will not go through your land. You will chase your enemies and they shall fall by the sword before you. Five of you shall chase a hundred and a hundred of you shall put 10,000 to flight. Your enemies shall fall by the sword before you. All of this is if we obey the statutes and commands of the Lord. For I will look on you favorably and make you fruitful, multiply you and confirm my covenant with you. So many miscarriages in the land. Why? Look up the miscarriages statistic. We're not fruitful because we're not following God. We have a hard heart. Verse 10, you shall eat the old harvest and clear out the old because of the new meaning you'll have more than enough and you'll have to make room for more. I will set my tabernacle among you and my soul shall not abhor you. I will walk among you and be your God and you shall be my people. We don't even let them in our schools. I am the Lord, your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that you should not be their slaves. I have broken the bands of your yoke and made you walk upright. But if you do not obey me and do not observe all these commandments, and if you despise my statutes, or if your soul abhors my judgments so that you do not perform all my commandments, but break my covenant, I also will do this to you. Listen to this. I will even appoint terror over you, wasting disease, say COVID, and fever, which shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart, heart disease, cancer, MS, Alzheimer's. And you shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemies shall eat it. I will set my face against you, and you shall be defeated by your enemies. Those who hate you shall reign over you and you shall flee when no one pursues you. And after all this, if you do not obey me, then I will punish you seven times more for your sins. I will break the pride of your power. I will make your heavens like iron and your earth like bronze. What does that mean? No rain and the ground is hard. We're seeing it. And he says, and your strength shall be spent in vain for your land shall not yield its produce, nor shall the trees of the land yield their fruit fruit. Then if you walk contrary to me and are not willing to obey me, I will bring on you seven times more plagues according to your sins. I will also send wild beasts among you, which shall rob you of your children, destroy your livestock and make you few in number and your highway shall be desolate. And if by these things you are not reformed by me, but walk contrary to me, then I also will walk contrary to you and will punish you yet seven times for your sins. I will bring a sword against you that will execute the vengeance of the covenant. When you are gathered together within your cities, I will send pestilence among you and you shall be delivered into the hand of the enemy. Are you hearing this? The Lord is saying that we have to turn and his mercy. Yes, it endures forever, but there's a time when he comes and he judges. Listen to what he says, though. In verse 40 of Leviticus 26, but if they confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers with their unfaithfulness in which they were unfaithful to me and that they also have walked contrary to me and that I also have walked contrary to them and have brought them into the land of their enemies. If their uncircumcised hearts are humbled and they accept their guilt, then I will remember my covenant with Jacob and my covenant with Isaac and my covenant with Abraham. I will remember. I will remember the land. These are the promises of God. He says he'll make the heavens like iron and the earth like bronze when we step out of the faith. So we have our marching orders and we know how to pray. We know how to pray. We know how to appeal to the mercy of God. Listen, I think we all agree God has every right to just wipe everything out right now. If we didn't believe it before, certainly we can see many reasons now. I'm looking at commercials on television and we've got people that are blatantly homosexual, blatantly transgender, 
You know, we're talking about HIV AIDS commercials during football games. We're seeing mass shootings. We're seeing shootings in our schools. What is happening? The grace of God has been removed in some cases and the enemy is being allowed entry because we have allowed him in by our disobedience. He is taking territory because we have given it to him. We have allowed him entry where he does not belong. And the Lord is actually showing his mercy by bringing consequences in the earth so that we have an opportunity to turn. This is something you need to begin to share with your friends in the faith, that they pray for this, that they begin to even take self, uh, self-assessment. Am I with the Lord or am I with my political preference? Am I with the Lord or with my favorite prophet who prophesies my political preference? Am I with the Lord or I'm anti certain race or anti certain people? Race doesn't exist in the kingdom, by the way. There is no black in the kingdom of God. It's nowhere in the Bible. There are peoples, nations, tongues, and tribes, not race. It's not about skin color. It's about your background, your nation. What do you represent? We are peculiar people. We are chosen generation. We are a what? Royal priesthood. We're all one nation in Christ. We need to take self-assessment. God begins with the church when he judges. Why? Because we're the ones who can change his mind. We're the ones who are called to seek his face and turn from our wicked ways that he will hear from heaven huh? and heal our land. Let us pray. God, I pray we won't divest of our accountability and our responsibility on the earth. You said that we are to have dominion, that we are to dress the land and keep it, meaning be caretakers of the land. That we are to, to teach our children your statutes, that we are to seek your face continually. Lord, I pray that we'll do it. I pray that we'll turn from wicked ways and we'll repent. May the spirit of repentance fall on your people. I prophesy to those hearing that you'll begin to pray for the spirit of repentance to fall in the body of Christ. No more being right. No more pointing fingers. No more relying on the government. No more pride. No more judgment of those who don't agree. God, we don't understand that sinners are going to sin. We're not supposed to point our fingers at them. We're supposed to ask, what do you what do you want us to do, Lord? How do we pray? How do we pray? How do we love our neighbor? How do we suffer for them? Give us your heart, God. You said forgive them for they do not know what they're doing. What an amazing proclamation. You're looking at those mocking, spitting, piercing, cutting your flesh, nailing your hands and feet into the to the wood. And you're saying, Father, forgive them as they're daring you to call upon angels to remove you from your suffering. Forgive them. And they were witnessing you. They were seeing your love in the natural. So, God, we pray for the same for those who are not in the faith today. Forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. We pray you remove the veil, even off of the Jews. Remove the veil that they might come to your goodness and know you as the true Christ. We love you, Lord. We need you. We need all of you. We need Holy Spirit, the comforter. We need him to be near us and next to us and walking with us as the paracletos. And we need to live out our a calling as the Ecclesia, God, legislating the kingdom of God in the earth, not blaming those who have a, a speck in their eye, but looking at the beam in our own. And I pray that we'll radically remove the things that offend us, that we'll cut off our hand where it's offending us, that we'll pluck out our eye where it's offending us, those things that we watch that cause us to be offended, those things we touch that cause us to be offended, the way we point our fingers out of offense. I pray that we'll remove ourselves from that attitude and that we'll repent on behalf of ourselves and our Father so that you can hear from heaven and heal our land. We thank you for this, God. We stand before you with souls that are like parched earth. Pour out your spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm humbled by this word. I pray that you will uh, be back for our next installment. We're going to talk about leaving in Cleveland. Cleaving. This is what the Lord is calling us to in 2023 in such a great measure. And uh, it's where we divulge of any and all things that are standing in the way of our walk with Christ. In particular, our careers. We're going to see people leaving their careers for the Lord. We praise God for you. If you want to get into this ministry, you can go to faithfireworldwide.com. We're in the midst of a $20,000 campaign to fund our international mission work, and to take care of the ministry and our family. Uh, we're going to Uganda and Kenya, South and Central America, 
um, in Kenya and Uganda will be preaching and prophesying and training and teaching pastors and seminary students and, and members of uh, dozens of churches that have been planted in those nations. Also, we'll be uh, partnering with Steve Fado and his team when they go to Central and South America for gospel crusades where people have been for decades getting healed, saved, and delivered. We believe the Lord is calling us to go and learn, but also we'll be there preaching. We'll be there laying hands on the sick, seeing them recover, and casting out demons in the name of the Lord. We're going to see the full salvation of the sozo ministry of Christ, and we're excited about it. So if, the, if you prayerfully consider that and you feel led to give, you can go to faithfireworldwide.com. Our website is also where you can sign up for our prophetic prayer alerts and get those to your phone, get those to your email when we have prophet, prophetic words to share with you. Share these with your friends and family. God wants the prophetic ministry to really take off, the pure prophetic ministry to take off in this time to combat false prophecy and confusion and lies that the enemy is sowing in the earth. We praise God for you. We thank God for you being here and listening. And I pray that everything God has for this word to manifest in your life will come to pass for you in Jesus' name. Go in his peace and until next time, God bless you and I love you. Thank you.